Welcome to this video. In the last video I created on Webpack, I showed you how you could add HTML and images to your workflow. So how you can get Webpack to copy your HTML file basically. And some of you ask if I could also show how you could work with multiple HTML files. There are actually two great solutions for that. Now, there are more solutions and you can simply Google to find more, but here are my two favorite solutions. I will use the same plugin we used before, the HTML Webpack plugin in one of the two solutions. In the other solution, I will use the file loader to copy the HTML file. So let's have a look at both solutions now. I want to start with the HTML Webpack plugin, but for both solutions, I actually need an additional HTML file. Right now I got my index.html file here in the source folder. And to keep it simple, I will simply add a second one, which I will name users.html. Now, whatever name you like, of course. Now this file exists in this folder too, obviously. And now, of course, I want to be able to, well, visit this file in the end. So to copy it into the dist folder, which we create, I now need to go to my webpackconfig.js file. And when using the HTML Webpack plugin, a very simple way of using multiple HTML files is to simply duplicate this plugin call here. So I'll simply add a new one in there like this. And now here, of course, I point to the users.html file. Of course, this has downside that you need to know which HTML files you use at the point of time you create your config. So it's not a very dynamic approach. If you got an app here where you add one or thousand HTML files, then this might not be the approach you're looking for. But if you have, for example, just the index HTML file and then a 404 HTML file to handle such errors, this might be the approach you're looking for. Now, of course, if I just drop in a line like this, what this plugin would do is it would still create only one index HTML file and simply use users HTML as the template now since it comes second here. So that of course is not the behavior I want. So I will give these files created by the plugin explicit file names. I can do this by adding the file name or configuration or option here. And we could name this first one index HTML, which is the name of the file we want to copy. And I'll keep the file name of the second file too, so I'll name this users.html. Of course, you could rename it to something else here. Now, with this setup here, you can now run npm run build to start your Webpack dev server again. And if you now visit localhost 8080, you see the index.html file we created in the last video. And now if we visit users.html, well, we don't see anything here, but this error, which I guess makes sense because what happens? The HTML plugin here copies the user's HTML file, creates the user's HTML file, which we do find if this would not be the case. So if we try to find a file which doesn't exist, we get this error here. So we do find the file, but in the file, if we have a look at the DOM, let me increase this, you see that it still tries to import our bundle. And that is just what the HTML plugin does. It does not just copy a file, it also injects your bundle into it. That's the idea behind this template. Now, what you can do here is, you can add the chunks option, and set this to an empty array. Let me restart this server here, and I'll re reload this page. And now you see, we don't get an error here in the console, because now we also don't try to import this. Because with the chunks option on this plugin, you can define which chunks, so will, which build artifact, so to say, should be injected into that HTML file. So for the first one, index.html, if we go back to that page, you see it still injects everything, because there we don't specify chunks. But here, since we set chunks to an empty array, it doesn't inject anything. Now, just to complete the picture with these chunks, so now we use an empty array to tell it, well, don't add any chunks. What is a chunk? Now, if you would want to tell it, hey, please include our bundle.js file here again, we would need to define entry a bit differently. We could write it as a JavaScript object here and set app, for example, that's just the one possibility. You can choose any property name you like here. And now this would be our app chunk. 
everything which is created from this entry point here. And then we could define app here as a string. And now if I restart this server and we visit our user's HTML file again, and I reload this, you now see we get the error again because now it injects this bundle again. So that is how we can control this with chunks and how we overall with chunks and the file name and the second webpack plugin call here can make sure that we just copy that file. Again, the limitation of this approach clearly is that we have to know which files we have at the point of time we write this configuration here. And that might not be the case for our setup. So I will leave it like this, but that is only one option. We do have another one. Now for this other option, I'll comment out this plugin call. I'll leave the change on the first one. Doesn't matter if we explicitly name it index HTML, that would have been the name anyways. But now I want to load that HTML file differently from within our code. So let's say we don't know it at the point of time we write our configuration, but certainly at the point of time we write our app. So then we could say we want to load our user's HTML file and I will actually go in my app.js file. Remember that it is in this file where we also load our SCSS code. So we're not limited to including JavaScript here. We can also include other assets of which we want to make Webpack aware basically. So what we can do here is we can also import our HTML file. So we could say import and now go up one level and then the, not the index, excuse me, the user's HTML file like this. Now that looks super strange, but this will actually work as you will see. So now I'm importing that, but of course Webpack doesn't know how to handle this. So let's go to the Webpack config and here I will copy my rule I created for images. We'll simply add it below there. And here I want to check for HTML files. And you could of course also change this expression to also detect HTM files. So that's HTML and I wanna use the file loader. I wanna keep name and extension, but the output path should just be slash and the public path therefore too, which I don't need to specify. So actually we can omit the output path too. Now with the file loader rule set up, I need to tweak it a little bit though. I need to add exclude to make sure that I don't also copy the index HTML file. Because what we have to keep in mind here is that we do include the index HTML file into our Webpack build process, right? We do that here. So I need to exclude it and this actually takes an absolute path. So I'll use path resolve again, dir name, and now we're then in the source folder and then we take the index HTML file. So I don't want to include this in my rule. Whoops, should be without that slash here though. So with this, if we now restart npm run build with this exclude uh, thing added to our overall HTML rule, it should work that if we now visit our page and I reload here, index HTML still works. And if we go to users HTML, it seems to find this file and let's now finally add at least some content to it, make this maybe an HTML page, users page, and most importantly, let's add something here into our H1 tag. Let's save this and reload the page and we see the users page. So this is now working and this is how you could copy multiple HTML files either by using the HTML Webpack plugin, if you know how many files it's going to be at the point of time you write your config, you set up your workflow, or using the more dynamic solution with an import here, this import up here, and then the file loader. Now, if you search for it, you'll find more and different solutions, maybe solutions which better fit your use case, but that would be two ways of doing it.